Calm down, I'm on my way. Ooh, but first tell me how you wanna play. Ooh, long as you don't hate, no. Relax, stop rushing me, I'ma get out for sure. What's up, everybody, and welcome to Sea Town Spotlight. I'm your host, Rio Barber, and today I'm sitting down with an incredibly talented R&B songstress. At just 22 years old, she is a self-taught recording engineer and vocal producer at two studios. Please give a warm welcome to Talaya. Hey, everybody. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you for having me. Yes, and you know, I saw you live at the Central Saloon. Oh, man. The runs. The tone is so smooth. Your stage presence, you really command the stage. Do you have maybe your first memory of performing? And I started with dancing. I was in this daycare um, center and one of the boys was a tap dancer. So my mom brought me and I was like, oh, I want to do that. So then I did it for like eight years and I wanted to do it professionally. And then right after high school, I was like, mm, I think it's the music that I really like. And that was where I kind of shifted from dance to music. R&B was just always the love. And I used to like sit in the hallways and sing Beyonce. Like when the self-titled album came out, mm -hmm. I was in the jazz room every day, yes. learning every note, you know, that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I've always had both, I'd say. And I know you've performed all around Seattle, but especially yes. the Robert Lang studio and yes. Mopop. Do you have like a favorite performance that you've done so far? Oh gosh, that's so hard. I feel like like, as a singer, I try to push myself each time, so it's usually my most recent because I, I feel like lately I've been on an upward trend mm -hmm. of just improvement. But I would definitely say the performance at Robert Lang is, is top two, but not two. Speaking of performing, we like to throw in some live vocals in the show. I'm gonna give you a word. You'll have 10 seconds to come up with the song and the lyrics or the title. I think I'll get hopefully half. Okay, <laughs> I have faith in you. You're gonna kill it, you're gonna kill it. All right, your first word. <laughs> is happiness. Um, I know where this is going. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, um, if I could just hold it, maybe even control it, what would you do if it had no hold over you? I hate being in this money pit. Truthfully, I don't give a not one. And the older I get, the more I see that crime pays, crime pays. That's my song, oh, Pursuit of Happiness. Yes, Pursuit of Happiness. Oh my God, you got me, I know. Girl, yes, you know how this goes. Thank so, you. yeah, that is the first track off of your new yes. album, Existential Soul. Congrats, you Thank dropped you. it just the end of August. So it's only been yes, a couple months. But it's fresh. Fresh, but so, so good. It's such thank a vibe you. and so well received from other people I've talked to as oh, well. Thank so, you. Congrats on that. Talk to me about that, like that process of oh my gosh. creating that. It felt like giving birth. <laughs> yeah. I felt like I was pregnant in my mind for like <laughs> a year and a half, and then it took me like a month to give birth to it. Yeah. That was the process. <laughs> exactly. It was not a short, well, oop, oop. it was like labor. Being an independent artist is like no joke. I felt like I was doing the job of like 10 to 15 people sometimes. And yeah. I spoke to a friend and she just gave me some really simple advice. And basically the advice was like, ask for help. Like even mm -hmm. from the company or the distributor, like just go to their FAQ and say, hey, I need some help. And I did that and all the problems were solved. Oh. So it was such a lesson. Was that like just you doing everything on yes. that? Everything but the pictures that were taken of me and the instrumental tracks. So every everything else. Girl. Thank that you. is <laughs> a damn feat. Congrats. Yeah, thank Seriously. you. You know, for that first song, Pursuit of Happiness, you really take it to a deeper place. Yeah. You know, talking about those money pits, you're talking about making ends meet and yeah. just leaving a legacy. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about like where your headspace is at when you started writing the album. What was mm. happening in life? I had started writing the album right before COVID. I had started coming to this jam session and meeting producers and people and I met Noah and he sent me beats and it just changed everything. Like just the level and quality of instrumentation was like what allowed my mind to open up and start writing. And um, my dad was a musician and I just had all of those things in my head of like, how can I keep going and just get better every time? And God just said, okay, I got you. I'll surround you with the people, give you the tools you need, and 
you'll see what happens. Your second song, Work. Yes. You got me hooked in the first two lines. <laughs> Gaslight me while the world is on fire. It ain't touch me, but the smoke taking me higher. I don't know what should I believe. I've been seeing things, hearing things. Break it down Yeah, for that's us. a lot. That one's kind of layered. Down. Dissect it for us. I was thinking about just climate change. I was thinking about um, just like politics in our country. I was thinking about just how so much misinformation was kind of going on, especially on the internet and like Facebook and places like that. And so it almost felt like, am I crazy? Like for knowing what's really going on, seeing the things that are really happening, or am I just being lied to? And that lie is what is like just causing me to not be present, causing me to vibrate low, causing me to not believe in myself, you know, kind of falling down into that ditch of like just working endlessly like a hamster every day. So yeah, I was saying it ain't touched me, but the smoke taking me higher because like, I'm not always directly affected by everything that goes on in the world, but especially being on my phone and just constantly scrolling, mm -hmm. it's like, it, it gives you like a disgusting high almost like of just constantly every day dealing with things, being traumatized, being, exposed to things on the internet that are just heart-wrenching, but you can't process it. Oh, in that song too, you really talk about TikTok, yeah. you're talking about social media. What's, what are your thoughts? Is it something more positive, more mm. negative? What What's kind of your message, especially for our generation where yeah. we're locked into our phones? Yeah, I would say just really curate your environment, like use it the way that you think would be healthy for you. I know I'm addicted to my phone and I'm not afraid to admit that, like that is so real for me, but in order to not let it poison me or you know negatively influence me I strictly keep it things I'm interested in um, music I really use my Instagram like a business page essentially versus a personal one I try not to endlessly scroll so just be intentional yes yeah. in moderation if you can help it so the third track on your album solified and no way yes that's a very important song for mm -hmm. sure talk mm -hmm. to me about that collaboration and what it meant to you to all of you to be able to create something like that yeah so I met Chrissy and Brandon in, in hip hop camp on my first year I did um, this program called the residency and that was at Mo Pop so that's how that came up along um, and we were in the same writing group together and um, we've just grown relationships over time Brandon is my partner he's my boyfriend uh, so we work together yeah. he recently changed his name to Don Gray and so yeah we've been working together I've engineered all his music we love each other <laughs> live together power couple <laughs> thank you <laughs> that's awesome um yeah and and chrissy and i have just kept a friendship for a long time we support each other buy each other's merchandise i also engineer some of his um music record help him record things like that i had reached out to roger the producer um who i've looked up to for so long i'm such a fan of him <laughs> specifically yeah. and i was almost on the flip side so at first i was in politics now i was kind of on the religious side of like mm -hmm. why are things like crystals considered the devil? Why are things like Palo Santo considered, you know, witchcraft? Yeah. And I'm like, why would God put this thing on the earth for it to not be used by yeah. humans? I was just kind of thinking about that. And then I was like, who could further just reiterate my point? And mm -hmm. I thought of Chrissy and Brandon. What's your favorite song off the album? I would definitely say that song, number three, or number five, um, Can We Let It Go, Too Much. Mm -hmm is a great one. I had hit up my friend Sky, who is an incredible producer. He just produced um, for SpaceX's latest commercial. Okay. Yeah. Casual. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> I asked him for some beats. He sent me um, the last song, Simple Steps, the beat to that, and he sent me the beat to Too Much. And immediately I thought of this person that I had been kind of following on social media. Their name is Keys Open Doors. Um, he's a producer, he's from Tacoma. And I was just like, this guy is great. He released an EP, he released a few EPs and I really listened to them. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just ask for a feature. And I didn't know them. I was just like, ah, I'm gonna shoot my shot. Yeah. And they're like, heck yeah, I'll do it. And I was like, oh wait, really? And um, so yeah, we did that and we sent it back and forth. And then I finished the rest of the song. Um, and. I released that as the second single for the album. And I just, that's a great song. It's an incredible song. Sad girl season, raining outside. <laughs> oh, no. That's for you. But he went on to um, help to produce positions for Ariana Grande. 
these are the people these I'm saying. These are the people in we our neighborhood. We need to support these people. We just don't even realize they're out there. Incredible. incredible people. Yeah. <laughs> like literally. And That's I, wild. It's wild. Positions? It's wild. Shoot. Talk to me about the music community in Seattle. Oh, how man. supportive everyone is. I never had really like a solid community or like people I could reach out to until I, I went to that jam session and went to a studio called Meat Street. And then I learned of Harvest House, which is a production company. They throw events. I learned of Coin Flip, which is a merchandise company. I was like, wow, I have this whole community of people that can help me and I can help them. And we can interchange you know, services and help each other just grow. And so that's what my life has been. Like this past year, just meeting them has been incredible. I'm managed by Harvest House. Like they throw shows and help me with merchandise and yeah it's it's a beautiful exchange all right you ready for another word yes your next word is fire let's be straightforward keep it exactly a hundred percent real you know i adore you but i'm not sure if we've got the same idea immerse with me let us be free and just breathe, breathe into who we should be. Yeah, that's cute. Oh, that's a long song, so yeah, I don't want to keep going, but. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, so beautiful. Thank I you. just I gotta give it up again. <laughs> to be honest, like, that song got me in that's my feels. One? Yeah, okay, that's good, the I'm one. Glad. And I don't know if it's because I'm a fellow Taurus. <laughs> Girl. 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 Yeah, you know, we fall hard. Oh my gosh, love. we flock we, together. We're loyal as hell. And we so, are loyal. I mean, when it comes to things where you gotta like question yeah. relations, that's, yeah. that's tough. That's a tough spot to be in. Talk to me about like, you know, the inspiration behind that song, what you were kind of experiencing oh, in love man. at that time. I don't know. It's just like, you know, when you um, are in a relationship, you just, you go through ebbs and flows and ups and downs. You know, sometimes things happen in your relationship that you end up holding on to and you try to let go of it and you don't even want to like bring it up or you don't want your partner to even know that you're still thinking about that thing that happened that you know you healed from and you've talked over and over about but sometimes those things just come up and you can't control it and I was kind of just questioning like dang can we get through this this thing that we're stuck on and we did get through it yeah. um, <laughs> but that's just real and that's mm -hmm. real life any relationship where you choose to love someone it's like there's gonna be things that you have to let go of. It's hard. It is, <laughs> not easy. What would you say is like the biggest lesson you've learned so far in love? Ooh, in love? I would say really to meet people where they're at and not project your expectations onto that person mm -hmm. because they are who they are and you can't force them to be anything that they're not. And if you allow them to grow and do the things that they need to do, they might even exceed your expectations or whatever the thing you projected onto them to be. They might go beyond that because they're their own person, not what yes. you think. So yeah, mm -hmm. I hope that made sense. Yeah, absolutely. Two yeah. whole individuals mm -hmm. as is. You Completely know, different people. Independently, but together. Right, That's right. Like, yeah. And you can't expect someone to do anything at the same rate of you and in mm -hmm. the same way that it's flipped, like you can't expect to keep up necessarily with someone that you're in love with or any in any way or anyone you know, like it's just not possible. Everyone is different. Yeah, absolutely. We're all on our own journeys. Mm -hmm. You never know what it's going to take you for sure. Exactly. After, you know, can we let it go? It goes into elusive. Mm -hmm. you know, and oof. That's, a, oh, that's a sticky one. That also, I mean, first off, I love how your vocals are not overproduced. You Thank can you. really hear that raw emotion in your tone of voice and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. So that one also just really hit me. Was that the second part of that? How did that relate? That's a different situation, a different person, a whole different thing. Just wanting things to be how they might have been previously. An example even is like missing a friend or like some like a childhood best friend, someone you grew up with in kindergarten or something. Mm -hmm. You know, people, they may not be in your life forever. Mm -hmm. I like to think, you know, you can think back on that chapter, that friendship for that yeah. time and just appreciate that. Right. You have to spend that time together. Mm -hmm. Especially in that song too, you really talk about healing. Yeah. How important is music to you in terms of healing as well? Oh man, it's everything. This, this whole entire project was literally a therapy session for me, like a year and a half long way of expressing myself 
Um, I have ADHD, so it's really hard for me to be consistent with a lot of things. And like journaling is one of them. But when I do it, I feel so much better. Mm -hmm. And so I thought like, well, what if I make an audio documentation of like my life? And that's kind of what this is. And that's why some sometimes it seems like there's a thread that runs through it. But the thread is just me <laughs> as the person experiencing these experiences you know you have such a wise soul thank at you just 22 years old thank you i know that you you know you lost someone very special to you as yeah. a child mm -hmm. and you know grief makes people grow up way faster than it they does should. it does and do you think that really kind of changed your perspective on how you see the world yeah my father passed away when i was three and for a long time i couldn't really wrap my brain around it, you know, like not understanding that disconnect so early in life. But I just always had this idea of him in my head of being like me and being me being like him. And I just that was part of my pursuit of music, like not having that around and imagining what it would be like to have a father who does everything that I'm interested in, you know, yeah. like that hurts a lot. Um, but my mom showed me a picture of me as a baby in a studio and Aww. I had never seen that and she showed it to me like what last year and so I had always and there was even a little video I had where I had this little karaoke machine and I was just yelling and making noise oh like God. falling out and jumping around with the it. mic in my hand yeah. and that was at like five years old and it's so true that they say that whatever you're into as a child will return in your life somehow mm -hmm. and so it's all it all feels so divine like it feels like what I should be doing yeah. and every time I think of my father I'm like I want to carry on his legacy I people just tell me constantly I meet new people that were like I knew your father oh. and it's been so like reassuring especially singing in church and um, recently becoming a choir director like oh, nice. my minister of music was like I knew your father and you are your father's child oh. I was just like oh my heart yeah. so I'm like dang I can't give up now yeah. like <laughs> I got all this not pressure but like I have so much responsibility mm. to carry on a man's legacy that was so great and incredible and um it just gave me fuel at that point but in the beginning it hurt a lot it, it was really painful yeah well i'm sure he's so proud of you thank you out there man I cheering think so you on too. your next word this will be a fun one okay it'll be fun because this word is very specific oh gosh yep yep uh -oh. so okay. i'll you know what? i'll even let you rap if you'd like to rap oh boy <laughs> your word is now with two w's oh come on <laughs> <laughs> um how does the song start calm down i'm on my way Ooh, but first tell me how you want to play Ooh, long as you don't hate no 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 Relax, stop rushing me, I'm gonna get out for sure. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, that's such a fun one. I love Thank how upbeat you. that one is too. And also, again, you do rap at the beginning. I do rap it. in the beginning, was I forget. That always something you enjoyed doing or did you just throw that in there for fun? It was just for fun. Yeah. Like, I was literally playing around. That little voice in the beginning is me. That's like, mm -hmm. T Lay, here she go. Like, I was literally that just. That was you play. too? Yeah, I, I just fixed like it down. <laughs> okay, I'm glad I fooled you. That is good. That was the goal. Wow. Wow. Oh, you. Good job, shoot. That is very validating <laughs> to know that I, I did it. I thought people were gonna be like, that's her, we know that's you. That song, I felt very inspired by like Missy Elliott and Timbaland, that kind of dynamic, how they just like, they're just super playful, you know? They just mm -hmm. kind of rap about like their environment, stuff like that. So yeah, that's where that, that kind of came nice. from. I was like, I just have this fast paced singing in my head. And then I was like, that's rapping. You mm -hmm. should do it, yeah. just rap. And I was like, okay, whatever. And it turned out okay. <laughs> Do these lyrics just come to you? How have, has that process been like? Yes. Like randomly in the middle of the night? Yes. You, really? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of times it comes to me when I'm driving and I know that's not very safe, but sometimes I will pull over or if I'm at a red light, just press record and just put my phone down and just kind of, my lyrics just come to me yeah. like passively. If I'm like going somewhere, I'll just hear the beat and get the hook idea and then usually everything else kind of flows. But when I am writing a song, it's literally like top to bottom or nothing. Yeah. I can't write a piece and then come back to it, that does not work for me. That's good though, because then you just get it done. Yep, you it's just like, out the way. Lollygagging around. Right, <laughs> you're like, oh, I have to finish this song. Like, that's not really a thing. Unless I haven't done the backgrounds. So that's like the part two of like mm -hmm. a song, so. You also do produce beats. So you're working yes. on producing. What's that like for oh, you? And gosh. when did you kind of start doing that? <laughs> it's such a love-hate relationship. That's actually what I did first before engineering. I was in the residency one day. <laughs> and mind you, we're like, 
16 to 19. So it's like high school, essentially summer camp. And um, one time we were going to lunch and I just kind of overheard like the boys talking. There was like four girls. It was like basically all men. And mm -hmm. then with some women sprinkled in at that time. Yeah. And so one of the boys was like, man, how do you make beats for girls? And we were all like, what, what? did you say? Did you? Huh? Oh my gosh, it was a whole yeah. thing. <laughs> So literally from then on, I was like, I'm going to make the beats. I'm going home. There I'm getting home. on Google. And I am I was like literally furiously typing how to make beats. And so that's so how that I came about. that moment fueled the fire. That moment really Don't kicked it up a notch. Don't underestimate, ladies, okay? Like seriously. True. Are you kidding? It is 2021, the year mm -hmm. of our Lord. Why are we still bringing gender into anything, really? Yeah. And then the next year, I did the production track in the residency. So it was like, it forced me to just learn, get better in like four weeks and like, it, it, that taught me how to like make a track, complete it, mm -hmm. the whole workflow, everything. And we kept on going. Yeah. Yes. I love it. I love it. And talk to me then about how you went into vocal engineering, because that is oh, yeah. different. And yes. vocal producing is also different. Yes. Kind of talk to us about the difference between all of those. Yeah. So um, one of my first clients, her name is Oya Storm. She's incredible. She's here. She was kind of the first person in my community to reach out to me and ask about like producing and like basically producing an entire project with her. That just went so smooth. I had discovered Splice. I was like learning new sounds and just um, kind of coming into my process and my sound as a producer. And then I was like, well, I would love to record you if you would let me give it a try. And she was like, oh yeah, totally. I, that's what I planned on. I'm like, okay, well, let's keep going. Came to Mead Street towards the end of that process. Um, so then it was kind of like, okay, well, I have access to the studio. I might as well start recording people. Um, I was recording in my mom's basement. So I was just like, I would like to charge my clients and really just take it seriously. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started engineering. And then that summer, the summer of 2020 was really when I started. So I started in the pandemic, essentially. Oh, vocal producing, that kind of comes naturally. I feel like, at least for me, as a singer, recording other people, if they're like, oh, I don't know what to put there, I'm like, uh, try this. And they're just oh, like, nice. okay, yeah. We just craft the whole song bouncing off of each other. Nice. So. You really just kind of ad lib and then, yeah. and then see what feels good. Exactly. And, and harmonies are like my favorite part. They mm -hmm. usually have their lead the way they want. They're like, okay, this is how I write the song. And I'm like, okay, go crazy. Mm -hmm. And then after they're like, what's next? And then that's when I come in <laughs> okay. and I'm like, okay, right here we're gonna go, ooh, or whatever the, nice. the yeah. yeah and then stack it up. That journey from learning yourself yeah. on YouTube to now doing it professionally for Ruby Room yes. and Mead Street there Studio. Mm -hmm. How did you kind of get that foot in the door? Because I mean, also, there's not a lot of black female sound engineers. Too. Yes. Any advice for people looking into that? Ooh, network. Network like crazy. Use your social media as your networking tool. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. Both of those, I mean, well, Ruby Room's a little different because I had a relationship with someone who worked there and they needed another engineer. But that didn't happen unless I took a chance on Mead Street. I literally was on Twitter. I was like, anyone need engineering assistance? Just try, same thing, kind of yeah. trying to get my foot in the door. And um, this wonderful person by the name of Lewis, um, shout out to Lewis. Yeah, I love that Lewis. man. <laughs> He's so sweet. He was like, um, I might, I'll talk, I'll hit you up, but come to this jam session. And so I just took the leap of faith of like, okay, I'll show up to this random place that you're telling me to <laughs> yeah. go to. That's I don't even know yeah. you. You know, yeah. like it really could have been weird, but it yeah. wasn't, it was so incredible. And then um, one of the people working there was just like, do you want to work here? And I was just like, yes, like I don't even, and then all the imposter syndrome came in and I was like, I don't even know what I'm doing. I've never even worked at a studio. Da, da, da. And then I was like, you know what? It, I would be silly to not take this opportunity. Yeah. So I struggled for about three or four months. Like there was days where I would literally just be like, I'm just gonna go home because I don't know what to do. Like mm -hmm. so many instruments I had never had access to um, that it was hard to express myself. I couldn't even get my ideas out. Mm -hmm. I had clients canceling on me. Like oh. it was not easy, but by the end of it, because I kept pushing through, more opportunities opened up. Then I went to Ruby Room and got to work with analog gear and using like top of the line synthesizers and all that, you know? So yeah. that was really just the fruit of crying on YouTube and taking notes and trying it until it works. Mead Street Studio too, they especially, you know, support BIPOC artists. Yes. And that's, what does that mean to you to get to be a part of something like that? It's really just a central hub for so many different 
groups of incredible people who are just doing what they love and supporting each other and putting on great events, having great moments. My favorite things out of Mead Street is a podcast called Broke Speakers, which I'm a part of. And um, it's a jam session where we record everything live for like six hours. And then um, one of the people that work at the studio, they condense it down and mix it into a listenable form, like a podcast. And so that has just like sharpened me. That inspired me while I was writing. Um, just meeting so many people, it's literally a melting pot of just excellence. Yes. And we all love each other. Yeah. <laughs> so much soul, too. Yeah. And you know, Seattle, it may have been known for its grunge rock, but yeah. R&B is really it's on coming the rise. Up. It's coming mm -hmm. up. It Talk is. Talk to me about that and you know, all those emerging artists as well. Yeah. I adore Fifth House. I adore um, Oya Storms, Maddie, she's incredible. Paris Alexa, she's incredible. Um, there's so many people, Fairy God's at, Charles Zaid. I told you now, now you know. <laughs> now I know, I gotta <laughs> now you know. Now you have to check him out. There's such an incredible music scene here, but it's you know, crazy. Like, you get, there are you know. like top A&Rs, there are top musicians that are here, and mm -hmm. people just don't even think of music when they think of Seattle, they think of the Seahawks. I want other professionals in the music industry to take mm -hmm. Seattle more seriously. I think if we really keep investing into the market and into the people that are doing the work, it can only get better, you know, and getting more funding for venues, things like that, yeah. more funding for artists so people can really make a living because they deserve to. It's work. It's yes. hard work. Like you were texting me back at five in the morning. You have long <laughs> days, sometimes those long days, Man. and then the show at night. And like even before you were like, professionally working oh, in yeah. studios because you're just taking whatever you know you're shooting yep. your shots whatever, whatever you can, you can do like oh my gosh too. so we like we need to support because we these do. people are like giving everything throwing their got. lives yeah, yeah. literally everything <laughs> they've got seven to seven i was doing that every um sunday night to monday for like a year and it's like emotionally it's draining very too. emotionally yeah. draining yep now i've really prioritized rest it's not good to not be healthy exactly Health first. Health Physically first. and mentally. Exactly. Spiritually, everything. everything. Yes, all yeah. the things. <laughs> all right, I'll give you another word here. Your uh -oh. next word is love. Love. <laughs> I wanted to think of a gospel song. Go um, ahead, girl. <laughs> <laughs> it goes, um, love, a word that comes and goes, but few people really know what it means to really Love somebody, oh love. Though the tears may fade away, I'm so glad your love will stay. Cause I love you. Yeah, it's oh. it's a long song. Oh my it's called gosh, love by Kirk that's Franklin. Yes. yes, Kirk Franklin. Kirk Franklin, the goat. You need to you need to listen to him if you have. Listen. No matter if you're religious or not, he'll this take is you true. places. Yeah. This is true. What's like your main goal with music? What do you kind of aspire to do? I want to continue to just cultivate really authentic and genuine moments where people of color can share space and we can support each other and we can really lift each other up and encourage each other and I feel like that happens the best at shows. So we are so stressed out and overworked and I think it's bigger than just like partying, especially if the music is curated to have an intentional lasting effect on a person or you know, you um, plan those moments that touch people and that's really important to me. So. I hope to just continue that, and I want to do it all around the world. So on this last one, you know, I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. I am gonna, I'm gonna let you just pick whatever is like one of your favorite songs or any song that's really special to you. That's a lot of songs. Take your time. We won't um, even use the, the timer of this one. And though you don't believe that they do, they do come true. For did my dreams come true when I looked at you? And if we get the chance, you will find you too like I. Overjoyed, I know I messed it up. Over love, over me. I did that. Completely wrong. Girl! Sorry, Stevie. Oh my gosh. But that you, know what, was, so you know what I was good. going for. Are you kidding me? 
I just botched, like, that's not the lyrics oh, of the order. Oh, I don't even care. That Listen. was heavenly. Yeah, that was I just you. angelic. I promise. Please, <laughs> give it up for that. Still so young. So much more to <laughs> go. Like, you. I can't wait to see, you Thank know, where you. you take everything. Thank you again so much for coming out here and talking about existential soul. Of course. Thank you for having me. Yeah. You just had a show at yes. Barboza. Is yes. there anything upcoming people can look out for? Or where can mm. they follow you on Instagram so yes. they can stay up to date? You can follow me on Instagram at Talaya Music, T A L A Y A, period music um and on my story i post constantly reminders mm -hmm. things like that um and when tickets are available they'll be in the link in my bio november 12th is freak out fest there's also another show november 14th i don't know the details but i know it's happening turn my post and story notifications on you will get them instantly Yes, and make sure to stream Existential Soul. Yes. Please where... buy it on Bandcamp. Yeah, Bandcamp. Streaming is cute. Other... The Bandcamp is great. Bandcamp, Bandcamp is, is the best. Great. Support the artist. Look Comment your the favorite shows. song below and like this video. And Go share it. Send it to a friend. Thank you all so much for watching C Town Spotlight. Thank we'll you. See you next time.